I want to talk about supermarkets okay. now and who's doing uh, the best job out there. Uh, who do you use? Why do you use them? Well, uh, we have all uh, got a favourite one there somewhere or other. Yes, and um, this year, for the third time in a row, m and has been crowned the country's favourite. However, budget brand Aldi and Waitrose are coming for the crown in close second and thirds for uh, the supermarket title. Joining us now, business expert Zoe Whitman uh, on this one. Zoe, good morning to you. Quite an interesting thing, isn't it? You've got your, your budget, uh, your, your bargain supermarkets in second and third place, and yet M&S, still the country's favourite in first. Is it? It's an interesting one, and I wonder whether, you know, one of the reasons, one of the big stories that came out of this was that the it was very difficult to score five out of five for value this year. In fact, no supermarket was able to do that. And I do wonder whether the way we measure value is changing or it's something to consider between the different stores. You know, M&S are known very well for their value. They, they actually stand by a value equation that they use where they talk about value being price, but also quality. And when we're comparing Marks and Spencers to the budget supermarkets like Aldi and Lidl, we're actually comparing very different experiences. We're, ex we're comparing very different types of product, different ranges, different expectations around customer service as well. Fascinating, isn't it? When we've just all been going through and are continuing to live through a cost of living crisis, the people are, you know, when we all know how much more our supermarket shops are costing, but they're still prepared to go to the top range because, you know, Marks and Sparks is lovely, but it's a pretty penny. They need to speak to their audience, though, don't they? And, you know, some of the feedback from the from the survey that which prepared was that it was sometimes a bit pricey. But then if you think about what you're comparing it to, if you're comparing something like Marks and Spencer's dine-in meal, you know, we've all gone and got that, haven't we? When there's a special occasion, dine-in for a tenner, um, you're not really comparing that to what those ingredients would cost you at a budget store. You're comparing them to the alternative of eating out in a restaurant. So, you know, the way we are using Marks and Spencer's in our everyday life is different to the way we use the budget supermarkets. Some of the respondents to the survey said that they would struggle to complete a weekly shop if Aldi wasn't out there. Um, but are the same people going to Marks and Spencers expecting to do their weekly food shop? I think we're looking at a different a different target market. Yeah. And um, how would you sum up the, the Asda and Morrison's experience there? They were both at the bottom of the rankings with a score of 64 percent. Both scored just two stars for value for money, and they failed to achieve more than a mediocre score in any category. Um, mm -hmm. So how would you how would you sum them up? Because they're such a part, a big part of a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I think supermarkets are a real a habit, aren't they? You know, we are loyal to a store that we know and trust. It might be based on the location. It's just part of our everyday routine and making a change does take a bit of effort. Um, actually, interestingly, Marks and Spencer's only came out at two out of five on value. So, you know, I think it was really difficult. The, t the top scores were for Aldi and Lidl, who got four out of five this year. So no one was getting that top spot. And I think it just shows how difficult people are finding it to um, make their money spread when going to do yeah. the weekly food shop. You know, Zoe, just quickly, I mean, you talk about location. And when I think about it, virtually every petrol station that I cross or pass on my drive home has an M&S in or near it. And then I went into the hospital recently uh, near to my home and there was a Marks and Spencer supermarket inside the hospital. So they seem to have done very well at acquiring lots of really key locations in the country, which is obviously making them very popular. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's demand has forced yeah. them into those places. But it's definitely a changing landscape when it comes to M&S. Do you think that when you go somewhere like a hospital or you're on a journey, you see it as a kind of special occasion and the way that you buy food Maybe. in that situation yeah. is different? Maybe it's a treat, a treat mm -hmm. supermarket. Um, Zoe Whitman, interesting to get your thoughts this morning. So just, experts, just before yeah. you go, just before you go, uh, when you run your, your eye down the list and the rankings of who finished where, and I'm thinking about the, the Waitroses, the Tesco's, the names we haven't mentioned so far today, what observation would you make in terms of who's really done not very well in, in all of this and who needs to take 
um, more attention into in what they are doing and what they are serving us with? Well, Asda and Morrisons came at the bottom of the survey. They both got 64% for their in-store experience. Now, um, some of the feedback was things like, I'm not getting everything I need uh, when I do my food shop. And, you know, that's important when you are living by a budget and you need to make sure you can get everything. Um, you want to get it done in one hit and not have to keep going to shop around. Um, there was also a survey of the online shopping experience and Aldi came at the bottom of that list, but they're not offering home delivery yet. Mm. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Zoe Whitman. Thank you.